Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're talking, what are we talking? This but, is your show. It's my show. This is your, you're driving the boat this time. Well, we're going to do a mead show. Okay. Because that's what I do. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. I if only we fun. had some mead ingredients. If only we had some mead. Let's, let's, oh, we have mead too. We let's start finish, off with having a little, a little the, sample. The finish so stuff. This is a, we have to have a little sample. This is a mead that my a son... A junior sample. A junior sample. That's <laughs> right. As it were. I use the, I use the Imperial BR549. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's getting that. No. <laughs> Google it. Google it. <laughs> my son made this mead. Uh, this is a ginger lemon mead. It's a 7.1% mead, two and a half gallon batch. Oh, that smells great. It's, a, it's his first mead. His first solo mead. It's all downhill from here. I'm telling you. Is that not good? Holy smokes. Chase, you killed it. You nailed this. <laughs> Chase. Yeah. This is awesome. It really is. It's just lemony enough. It's just gingery enough. Yeah. It's not, when you use lemon, uh, there is a risk that you will uh, trip on over into the lemon pledge yes, field. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is not that at all. Uh -huh. um, it's, not, it's not tart enough to be like a lemon aid or lemon right you know juicy kind of a thing but it's the flavor of the lemon and the and the ginger uh blends in there well so mm. what so how did he make it i don't remember the exact recipe meaning i don't remember exactly how many pounds of honey we used right he used i i was in the background <laughs> totally but uh i'm gonna say about five pounds of honey in a two and a half gallon batch mm. it's a seven percent mead mm. Um, as I recall, we used the White Lab Sweet Mead yeast. I think he pitched that. Okay. And then at and then he just left it alone. And then we did rack it to a second. I say we. He did this. <laughs> I'm so used to in being the, in the royal sense. Yeah. So he racked it into the secondary. He let it set for a while, and then at bottling he flavored it to taste with with using the extract, the little four ounce oh. Brewer's oh. Best extracts that I sell. And I, I do know that he used about two ounces of each. Huh. So, you know, I told him to go slow, taste frequently, mm -hmm. which is very good advice. You know, don't just dump the whole thing in there right. and then be mad because it tastes like cough syrup or, right. or whatever. Right. Go slow, use the appropriate amount. You know, it's like any spice or flavoring. If you put too much cumin in your whatever, it's going to be too much and yeah. it won't taste right. So this, this is, it kind of surprises, surprises me. <laughs> Second show of the Second day. Show. <laughs> it su surprises me that that it's an uh, those that it's those little extracts because mm -hmm. it tastes fresh. Yeah, I, I think again the extracts get a bad rap if they're not used correctly. Mm -hmm. But I will also have the caveat that I understand completely that everybody's palate is different right. and picks up differently in how they're used. But I think if you use them correctly, you get a good result. Right, and doing it by taste, and you can do that because there aren't any fermentables in there, so you don't have to worry about right. it carrying yeah. on after you bottle. And I believe we did, uh, he we did uh, use the potassium sorbate to stabilize it to make sure it okay. couldn't come back to life. Yeah. So that's that. Nicely done. So anyway, yay Chase. Yay. So we're going to we're going to start a new meet here today, and uh, we've done some of the work already. So I've already got about a half a gallon of water in here. I've got the other two gallons in here. So this is a three-gallon batch. Okay. It will eventually be a melomel, which is a mead with fruit. And actually, this will be a mead with fruit and spices, so I'm not sure what category that officially falls into, but I don't care about that. A spice melomel. Spice melomel. <laughs> <laughs> the velvet fog. That's right. No, it's Mel Torme. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and so what we're going to have, what we're going to do today, the recipe is a three-gallon batch, which will eventually get a bunch of apricots and some saffron, Ooh. but not until it's in the secondary. So today we're going to just make mead, just honey and yeast and water. Okay. I've got five pounds of local Farmington honey. Mm. From, uh, a fellow that keeps some bees in the little town I live in gave mm. me five pounds of his honey. I've got a 30 ounce jar of pine bee honey. This came from Turkey. Huh. And it's pine honey is different in that the bees are little thieves so they don't they 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 go on to the pine cone and they steal the nectar or whatever it is from little aphids or ants i, I can't remember which huh. but there's another bug that actually makes the little nectar the, the bees go and steal it then they bring it back to the hive and they make this honey so the the bees take the 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 aphid 
spit and yes. turn it into bee poop or whatever the exactly <laughs> so you're getting excre yeah secretions and excretions from two different if insects. we could only get a cat to poop this out we'd <laughs> <laughs> so but so, it's very interesting it's it's not heavy should, should i get a couple of spoons yeah, for us to sample definitely i'll go into the spoon department here because this is very unique and it's not like a buckwheat honey it's not like a big heavy <laughs> okay okay <laughs> um it's just kind of a yeah, now this is the trickiest part here, is not, yeah. not getting it all over the place. Mm. Different. Mm. Kind it's of milder than I Very mild. It's very mild. It's very mm. kind of caramely, mm -hmm. but not, not too much of anything in any direction. It also no. doesn't strike me as, as sweet. I was expecting piney, but... It's yeah, not, it's not it's not overly sweet. It's interesting. Huh. Huh. So I've been I got this at a Middle Eastern grocery store in Kansas City. A, mid, a Midwestern a Midwestern Middle Eastern grocery store. Midwestern Middle Eastern store, right. <laughs> and uh, I've been looking for an excuse to do something with it. I'll so, just get out of your way. I'll be back okay. here. You'll be with, back here with, so my, what, with my beer from the previous episode. Now the, <laughs> let me know if you need anything. I will. So the <laughs> way that I do share. this <laughs> uh, the way that I do this sort of thing is I use the no-boil method. I don't boil my meads at all. I used to boil them. We used to boil them. Yes. Long time ago. <clears throat> now all I do is have water that's at room temperature, meaning summertime room temperature. Mm -hmm. If this was in the middle of the winter, I'd heat this water up. This water is still probably 75 to almost 80 degrees, I bet you. Yeah. And so it, it'll incorporate the honey just fine. You just have to stir it in. Um, it is a little trickier to get all the honey out of your jar. If you've well. got, you got a poo bear around here... <laughs> <laughs> some piglet anywhere <laughs> now if you wanted to you could you could mix up some yeah. uh, pan of water hot water beforehand yeah. and kind of set that i could have and i probably and thing. i should have done that <clears throat> but i didn't in a trick that i heard from a local beekeeper if you have if your honey has crystallized mm -hmm. you keep the jar sealed and yep. run it through the dishwasher really yeah that's what he said wow i can't don't take my word for it. <laughs> if it doesn't work, yeah. blame him. <laughs> if you have an exorbitant dishwasher bill. <laughs> but, you know, the hot, the water gets hot. Sure. And, uh, you know, that's so, what he said anyway. You know, I, I, should, I really should have heated up a little bit of water for this, but I've got 98% I've got of it out of there. I'll save the rest for a cup of tea. Mm. You know. And so now here is the five gallons of local. Ooh. Do you have your spoon? I can get two more spoons. Okay, get two more spoons. Clean spoons. So this is, oh my, this smells really, really good. <coughs> okay. Excuse me. So take a little taste. It's dark. Mmm. Mmm. That has, that's both sweeter. Yeah. And has a little more character mm -hmm. in it. So and it tastes more um, honeycombing. Yeah. Oh, my wife got the honeycomb from this. <gasps> oh boy, she I brought me some in when I was a kid. Yeah, and so she brought this to me, or brought me in some of her honeycomb, and she's like, "Taste this," and we sat there and chewed honeycomb until we were. Honeycomb's very happy. big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small. <laughs> no, 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 boy, you measured. <laughs> I just got it just right on the money, didn't I? <laughs> Are you going to be mopping the floor later? Yes. <laughs> I'm predicting yes. <laughs> it's all signs point to yes. <laughs> Maybe we should put the bucket on the floor. Yeah, we probably to, should. To pour. This is pretty heavy. Pretty thick. So, um, <laughs> indeed, I, you know, because of TV and all that, I didn't heat any water. If you've got a little, uh, another little spoon, I can kind of scrape the spatula a little the bit. Scrapey the scrapey this spoon. This one? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. okay. All been this sanitized for, oh, yeah, for your protection. Everything is we clean a, as a whistle. We have a spray bottle of Star Sand. Yes. For such purpose. Available at stevesbrewshop.com. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> we got it. We got one complaint a few episodes ago from a guy who said, oh, it's like an infomercial. <laughs> well, I own the damn store. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Buy it somewhere else. You gotta make a living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving okay. you, we're giving you free info. That's right. So the, the main thing that I kind of wanted to show here Pardon today me. is that meat is really easy to make. It, it doesn't have to be a giant production. Um, I would say... <laughs> We're not about giant productions here. <laughs> that's for sure. 
You should use the best honey you can get. Yes. The very best honey you can get your hands on is a always a good thing. Um, if you find honey that's too cheap, that's too inexpensive, like three dollars a pound, two ninety five a pound, run away from that honey because it means it's probably got about thirty five or forty percent of its corn sugar, mm. and that happens all the time. Mm. So look for the truth in labeling label. There is a little certified label that if the manufacturer is honest about it, of course you can fake that too, but, mm. but there is a little uh, certified label for honey. Um, and, and if it says raw honey and it's local, so in other words for us, say it came from Prairie Grove, local raw Prairie Grove honey, you're probably pretty good, probably pretty safe. C know your beekeepers. And if you, have an mm. if you know anybody that keeps bees, they're going to have honey, mm -hmm. and they might not know what to do with it. <laughs> so here we have. So here we have our. Uh, it works out to be 80 ounces of honey altogether, in a gallon, in about a half a gallon of water. I've already pre-poured the rest of the water into here. All of this was sanitized before the show, so that's all good, and you guys know how to do that. So just for safety, we're going to put this on the floor, <laughs> or in the sink. Let's oh. put it in the sink. Yeah, oh, well. Yeah, because okay. that way if... All right. You, that way he's not mopping the floor. Yeah. This is a self-preservation thing. Because <laughs> we have evidence that I didn't make the floor sticky. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. you got to pour quickly. Yep. Look at that. Oh, look at you. Do we need the spatula? Yeah. Give me the spat. Give me the spat. Spat. Never turn your back to the camera. The spat stat. i got a little bit of honey in here that I didn't get fully incorporated. I really should have heated some water up. You, you suggested it, and I said, ah, no, that's enough heat. But I should have. That's all right. <laughs> the special will get most of it. Yeah, we'll get most of it. It'll be okay. Okay. That's good. Yum. So I'm just going to give this a, a nice stir, get it all worked in. Hi. <laughs> Ignore. <laughs> Ignore the man behind the curtain. Okay. So... <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got a little bit more to do. Oh, not a lot more. Do you think it? Do you think it's mixed up enough to get a gravity reading? Um, actually, I do. So let's go ahead and take that. I was going to put the other chemicals in first, but let's go ahead and gra grab the gravity. We got a, a refractometer. Yep. Spoon. Refractometer. These are very handy little gadgets. They read in bricks. Right. You have to. So you have to multiply by four basically to get. Uh, yep. Get your. So let's see what we get. Maybe focused for my eyes. I'm, I'm blind in one eye and can't see out the other. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. I see. <laughs> it's a cloudy. Thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna break into song at any moment. I it's see right fields of green. Yeah, I couldn't think of the lyrics. Um, I see 14. See what you see. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 14. 14. Now, it might not be completely accurate because we're taking, you know, cold honey right. or room temperature honey mixing up with room temperature water. So it, it, there might be some mixing up that has to go on in the fermenter as it's fermenting. That's pretty darn close, though. So. But 14 times 4... 28, let's get this out of the way, 50, 56, is that right? 1056. Sounds right. So fair, fairly low gravity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this, is not, um, this is not a lot of honey for a batch this big. Mm -hmm. So, and... But you're going to add more fermentables later. There will be some more fermentables that goes into this. But now here's the thing. Here's the thing that you've got to do. A lot of people stop right here and pitch yeast. But really, honey is very hard to ferment. Honey right. doesn't want to ferment. Right. So you have to help it along. Um, and so we're going to do that by adding some yeast energizer, which is a mixture of diammonium phosphate, which is yeast nutrient, mm -hmm. some spring cell, and some magnesium sulfate. So this is like a little vitamin pack right. for the yeast. We're also going to add a little bit of pectic enzyme to this. The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to come back later and I'm going to add some apricots. Oh, so that helps with the It'll clarity. It'll help break down the pectins in those apricots. And I'm going to add some diammonium phosphate, which is yeast nutrient. And we'll mix that all in. We know we're at pitching temperature already. Mm -hmm. No need to really measure that. And then we'll pitch our yeast. 
And our yeast is the imperial shake. Don't, don't I'm, not, shake I'm not shaking it. I'm, I'm You're slowly, slowly rousing it. Because yes. if you shake this stuff up, you might have a mess on your hands. But So here's the, here's the yeast nutrient, and I only need a half a teaspoon for this size batch. So I did that. Here's my uh, yeast energizer. And I need more of that. I need a teaspoon and a half. So there's one, no, two. And where do you come up with these numbers? Where do you... I, I get them off the label. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, it says, right there. it says right there. Extensive research. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's good. I'll just read the label. <laughs> and, uh, but actually, that, this is, it is a general amount it's a general safe amount to add when it when in doubt read the instructions yes yeah, exactly right and then this is just the pectic enzyme and um i forgot how much to it's half a teaspoon per u.s gallon so one and a half teaspoons oh there's we have a three gallon batch one and i probably two three could have waited to do this when i added the fruit but it won't hurt anything to do it now okay are you i'm gonna stir this in Okay. With my string spatula. Now, oh, you want me to open the yeast? Sure. All right. You very carefully, very gi ah, gently do that. Release the pressure. See, it doesn't spray everywhere. Yay. Yay. And uh, should I sanitize? Whoa! Hello. Oh boy, that's all clumped up together. That yeah. that ought to fall out real nicely. Sweet. I was gonna I was gonna ask if uh, if I should sanitize a spoon because sometimes with a little can, you can sanitize a spoon and you can stir it up, but that's that looks not like a, it's just gonna go right. Let's see what we get. I pour I pour like half of the liquid in there. Yeah. And then uh, and then stir it around a bit. Whoa. Should I sanitize a spoon? I think. We'll, let me see here. I think that good. one's very flocculent. Yeah, it's very clumped together. I, 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 I did the. Um, we're good. I did the saison yeast. Clean as a whistle. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I did the saison yeast, and it was very not very flocculent. Really. Yeah. Actually, I so. chose this strain. This is the house strain from Imperial Organic Yeast. Okay. And I chose it's it beer specifically. Yeast. It's a beer yeast, but I chose it because it it's a high flocculating yeast, and I want this to move along pretty quickly. There you go. And I want it to flocculate so that it's nice and pretty. I don't yeah. want it to be hazy and cloudy. I don't want to be fighting sure. yeast that doesn't want to flocculate. You bet. And um, I think it'll be delicious. There you go. So now I'm going to give this just one little bit of a quick stir, just real gently here. And, We're off, gonna... and off camera, we'll do a little shaking mm -hmm. to aerate it. Yep. We'll put the cap on this. We'll aerate it well. We're just going to. I'm just going to use the shake method. And. Uh, <laughs> And that's going to be the mead. Now, what we'll do, this will ferment for 10 days, two weeks. Once it's done, and it has a little bit of time to clear out, to settle out, flocculate, the big word, then we'll come back and we'll add apricots and saffron to this. Mm. And then we'll let that work for about two weeks. I'll rack it off. And I'm actually going to do this a little differently. I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm not going to rack this off. That's why I put it in a bucket. Just keep it in the fermenter. I'm going to keep it in the fermenter. I'm going to add the fruit to it in what amounts to the secondary on yeast. Right. But my rationale is that this is going to move along very quickly. There's not going to be time for autolysis to set in to any measurable degree. Right. There's not very much pressure on that yeast. Right. So when you have small amounts of liquid like this, you really don't have a problem with that unless it sets there for six or eight, seven months. Right. So we're going to put it on the fruit. I'll probably put the fruit into a mesh bag so it's easy to put in and easy to take out. I'll have some saffron. I'll probably make a little saffron tea mm. and add that to it. I may actually do that at bottling oh. to keep that little bit of saffron flavor really nice. And then uh, we'll have what I'm calling Turkish delight. So Turkish honey from the bee honey. Apricots are very big in Middle Eastern cooking. Saffron mm. is very big. And I may or may not add a little bit of rose water, oh. which is a also a kind of a condiment in Middle Eastern, Lebanese, Turkish, Greek food. Cool. So uh, Turkish Delight Mead, and stay tuned or come back and tune in again for That's the right. next episode. We will come back 
uh, whenever it's ready for the next step. So subscribe to the channel. Yes. Subscribe to the podcast if you're watching this and buy, get the app on the uh, Apple yeah. Store or whatever. If you have an Android, go to the Amazon.com. Yep. Play with your mead. Good job, Chase, again. Yes, Chase. Cheers. Cheers. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> oh. oh.